summary of a, a, a briefly of what we're about to talk is when you have a fib you worry about the symptoms you worry about stroke and arterial embolism so blood clots that travel from the left atria and you worry about heart rate these are the only three things we worry when you have a patient with AFib. So, um, and that's when we're going to talk about how we treat the patients. There's, a, there's times where you don't want to do anything, just let the patient be. There are times where you want to give antiarrhythmic drugs to try to prevent, to lower the, ins the time of AFib or prevent the risk of AFib. Other times where do you do ablation? And there are other times when you don't care about the rhythm, if it's AFib or not, and you care about the heart rate, so you do rate control. You focus on the rate. And uh, so, and, uh, so these are the main, the main approaches. So this is what we normally will call rhythm, control the rhythm strategy, or control the rate strategy. And these are the only two ways to treat AFib, to try to control the rate or the rhythm. The third, which is the risk of stroke, is always treated with oral anticoagulation unless there's a contraindication. But no, no matter what you do, if you do this or that, you still have to do oral anticoagulation because the risk of stroke does not go down if you do rate or rhythm. And I'll talk about that because it's not an absolute truth what I just said. Some data suggests that if you're able to control the rhythm, you lower the risk of stroke. But the data is not strong enough for us to go ahead with these therapies so the patient can stop the anticoagulation. But we'll, let's take a little break and then we'll keep going. So um, let's imagine that 